to show you a reaction which I didn't know could occur, the reaction between magnesium and water. The reason why I didn't know it can occur is quite simple. Let's look at this experiment. Here I've got a piece of magnesium ribbon and some water. You see that if I add the water, absolutely nothing happens. I didn't really think whether magnesium could react with water. However, Neil has done some quite exciting experiments which Brady has videoed in slow motion. So what Neil did was to take bits of magnesium, set fire to them in air, so they were burning really brightly, and then gently lower them into a large container of water. As with all his experiments, he began on quite a small scale. In the first experiment, it's all quite dark. You can't see the water very well at all, but you can see the magnesium as it comes in. What I found really quite surprising is that the burning magnesium continues to burn underwater. In fact, bits of it start coming out of the water again, breaking off. And that came to me as a real surprise to begin with. But then I realized that the magnesium is pretty hot, close to its melting point. Its melting point is only 650 degrees centigrade. And in fact, in some of the shots, you can see bits dropping off the magnesium even before it gets to the water because it's melting. When it goes into the water, you have a very clean surface of magnesium. And so there is no oxide layer to protect the magnesium as there is in the water that we've got here where the magnesium is coated in a layer of oxide. So it's insulated, if you like, from the water. So you have very high temperature water and clean magnesium, and so you can get a reaction of magnesium producing magnesium oxide and hydrogen. It may be magnesium hydroxide, but you will get hydrogen. So you have an exothermic reaction making the magnesium oxide or hydroxide, and you're producing hydrogen, which itself can burn and could cause a minor explosion. It's a bit like sodium, but not quite so violent. Neil then tried it on a bigger scale. And there, it's really nice. You can see as the magnesium goes close to the water surface, you can see its reflection coming up to meet it, the reflection of the burning magnesium. And then there is a few seconds of video, which was a much shorter time because it's been slowed down in reality. Then there is really quite a violent reaction and pieces of burning magnesium fly out. In fact, some fly out completely outside the container. Then being Neil, he tried an even bigger piece. Then what happened is that, again, you see the burning magnesium approaching its reflection. And once it goes in, you get a really violent reaction. there is quite a nice red color that is formed. I'm not sure whether this is the emission from hot magnesium atoms. We've seen these sort of emissions in the reactions of rubidium and sodium, 
or whether it is just the hydrogen gas burning, because we've also seen in some of our videos that hydrogen gas, in the absence of excess air, will burn with a reddish color. But there is a quite a nice reddish color formed as well. So what can we learn from all of these? Chemistry is often unexpected. I'd never seen the reaction of magnesium with water, and it is the high temperature and the fact that it's liquid that is causing this reaction to take place. If you look at the periodic table, calcium reacts quite easily with water. Calcium is the element immediately below magnesium. So it's not surprising that magnesium also reacts with water, but chemists usually forget that. I did ask Neil why he'd ever tried this experiment. And the answer is that he was burning a piece of magnesium in his fume cupboard and the fire got a bit bigger than he really liked. So he put it into some water, and to his amazement, it went on burning. So the real take-home message for all of you is that if you have a metal fire, the last thing you want to do is to put water on it. This is probably why, during the World Wars, people used magnesium bombs as incendiary devices because once the bomb starts burning, you can't put it out with water. Sometimes they use phosphorus, often they use magnesium. If ever you're working with metals at high temperature and they start burning, use sand, don't use water. Professor, if we scraped the oxide off that piece of magnesium ribbon, would it react with the water at all? Like, do you need the heat? I have no idea. I wondered myself whether this would happen. My feeling is that there might be a reaction, but it would be pretty slow. That is, if we clean the magnesium, perhaps electrochemically or something like that, eventually we might see a few bubbles of hydrogen. But it's partly the high temperature, the molten metal, that really gets the thing to take off. So the answer is it might react, but it wouldn't make a good video. So if you'd like to see another great magnesium reaction, you can see the video we made a little while ago of magnesium reacting with solid CO2. Again, magnesium is extracting oxygen from a molecule CO2 that we would normally expect to be pretty stable. The difference between its reaction with water and CO2 is that the carbon it leaves doesn't burn. You just see a black residue the hydrogen adds a little warmth to the experiment.